This is my final form. <laughs> I'm five years post-op. <laughs> it's wild. It feels like forever, really. I don't remember ever having breasts. If you've been watching my channel from the very start, you'll know that when I got out of surgery, I didn't feel like joy or happiness. I just felt that this is how my body was always meant to be. It just felt right. In terms of the actual results, uh, as you can see, I've been getting inked up. Uh, and yeah, a little part of that is because I was starting to get a bit self-conscious about how large my areola were. And, you know, that's a choice that I made. Part of the reason is I didn't realize that they were going to darken after surgery. Before my surgery, my areola were kind of pink color and I just assumed that they were gonna stay that way afterwards. So I was comfortable with having the larger size. You know, I'm non-binary, I'm still non-binary <laughs> and I wanted a non-binary result. And not that there's any way to look non-binary, uh, but I didn't realize that your areola can actually change color after surgery. So mine became brown <laughs> and that meant that they were more visible and so I have opted for the tattoo cover-up. My actual scars were pretty light so the tattoo isn't necessarily there to cover them up. Like you can see here they're, they're not particularly visible the scars. I did a ton of scar care afterwards and I'm really grateful I did that. Having said that I only did scar massage right on the actual visible scar line and so here's a little story. Last year, around March or April, I started having some rotator cuff issues and it got to be quite painful and I had to go to a physio about it and did all these exercises and I'm fine now. Uh, but what she said was that when you get a double mastectomy, this is the visible scarring, yes, but they, you know, take the entire, if you get a your double incision, they'll take this whole part of skin up right as they pull a, the fatty tissue out and they'll put it back down again so the actual wound basically goes like right up to here like quite high uh, if you watch the videos i filmed of dr moss's procedure you can see how much they actually lift up and so what had happened was i'd done a ton of scar massage on the actual scar line but nowhere else and so this side on my left side which is where i've had the most issues the skin and the scarring had kind of healed up maybe not the skin but kind of underneath I guess the fascia had sort of healed up quite tight and what that was actually meaning was my shoulder wasn't getting full range of motion and so it was pulling my shoulder a little bit forward and I was going to the gym and everything working out but my posture wasn't right because the scar tissue was pulling my shoulder a bit forward so this was always out of alignment um, so I finally just hit the fan. So now what I've been doing is I've been using my cupping set to to basically self-massage this tissue and it's been helping quite a bit. This is the cupping set that I use. I'm going to demonstrate on this side uh, because this is a new tattoo and I don't want to wreck it. But basically you kind of put it um, wherever the scarring might be giving you issues. Uh, it's pretty good to just kind of do it anywhere. Uh, I definitely wouldn't do this um, if you're less than 12 months post-top surgery. The reason you wear a compression vest after surgery is to keep everything together <laughs> uh, so it heals kind of all in line and it's to stop swelling so you don't want to be doing this too soon after surgery. I'd say a year, maybe even two. I'm five years post-top so this is fine. It, it sort of pulls that area so you've got your skin layer, you've got your fascia, you've got your muscle and if it, if it heals together, which is what I think happened on my left side, uh, then as you kind of use your muscles, it can all sort of get stuck a bit. And so what cupping does is it just sort of teases out that, that stickiness. Um, if you don't have a cupping set, that's fine. Like regular pectoral massage can help quite a lot. There's a lot of post-surgery care that isn't just scar massage on the line for aesthetics. Um, you know, I haven't had issues on my right side and I'm not sure why that is. There was that nurse that came and had a real intense poke around on my left side a few hours after surgery and I, I am concerned that she did some damage. 
I wasn't happy with the way that she treated me and my one friend that I had as a support person had gone home because she got food poisoning or something so it was just me alone completely drugged up in the hospital bed and this nurse was poking around on this left side and it hurt a lot and I wasn't I was slurring my words I was still quite high on the painkillers and wasn't really able to tell her that it wasn't okay so if you're thinking about getting surgery like make sure you have at least two support people that are gonna be there for you because that was a quite a stressful experience. No surgery is without the potential for complications and top surgery isn't any different. It's still something you need to weigh up, right? I'm a person who enjoys taking care of my body, <laughs> um, which sounds, I don't know, like a little self-righteous, like I'm tooting my own horn, but it makes me happy and I, I totally don't mind doing it. So for me, that wasn't at all um, like a negative thing, it's just a thing, you know, this is my body, I gotta do it, right? Like I have a foot issue right now that has nothing to do with being trans and I also have to take care of that. Um, <laughs> I, I got injured a lot last year, it was um, a bad year all around. <laughs> uh, I'm doing much better now, it's all good. But like with any kind of surgery, there, there are potentials for complications. Uh, this nipple died. It's dead, it's gone. <laughs> like I just, I straight up don't have a nipple on my left side. I do on my right. I, I have very little feeling in my chest area. I think even if you're with the most skilled surgeon, you're gonna have less feeling. Like when I was getting my tattoo here, right in the nipple and areola area, I couldn't feel it at all. Same thing with this side yesterday. It was even greater. I think it was kind of an inch all around here. I couldn't feel and a lot in the skyline I couldn't feel, which is like great when you're getting a tattoo and it doesn't hurt. <laughs> I don't see the utility in thinking about would I have done it differently? Do I have any regrets? Because I'm, you know, I'm here now and this is, this is the path that my life has taken. Um, you know, I certainly don't regret getting top surgery. I'm more thinking about people saying like, oh, you know, would you have gone with the same surgeon? Would you have gotten different procedure? Blah, 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 right? Like, like, I don't know, you know, I was the person I was at the time that I made the decisions to get the kind of surgery that I did, and then I did that, and now I have a flat chest and I don't have dysphoria, <laughs> right? So, you know, that's that's my journey. I don't really want to spend much time thinking about the like, minute details, right? I'm not going to show me pre-surgery. If you want to see that, go back to my very first video and scrub to the end, and you can see my boobs. <laughs> and this is me, like, about three months post-op, so I'm just going to chuck these clips up. And then this is me now. Um, obviously, part of this situation is testosterone, uh, which I wasn't on when I first had surgery. So that's why my shoulders are as broad as they are now and all that jazz. You know, that, that's not because of top surgery. Yeah, so take care of yourselves, take care of your surgery sites. Um, you know, I'm five years post-op and I'm still doing cupping, I'm still doing pec massage. I'm still doing special stretches, you know, this one where you put your, your arm up against a wall or a door frame and kind of pull, that one's pretty good. Uh, you know, I'm doing more care around my chest area than I would have if I was born a cis guy, right? Uh, that's just part of the trans experience, I think, is more self-care after surgery, right? Um, you know, if you go down the surgery route, and it, it is what it is. Uh, I don't mind it, it's part of how I am, it's part of how I take care of my body, it's part of my journey, um, but all in all, I'm stoked. You know, this is this is me, this is my body. I, I look in the mirror, especially in the last year when I've been on a higher dose of tea, which I'll talk about in another video, <laughs> um, I've caught sight of myself in the mirror and there's just been this very recognizable connection that that's, that's me. This is, this is me, this is who I am, this is my body, I see me in a way that I don't think I have since I was a very young kid, right? I've always looked in the mirror and I've been like, oh yeah, I guess that's the person whose body I'm inhabiting. I guess that's my flesh vessel. <laughs> but now I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, oh, I actually see myself, right? That flesh vessel <laughs> represents who I know myself to be and who I am. So right, that's where we are. This is my chest five years post-op. Oh hey, I didn't see you there. <laughs>